Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. I know this video is a little earlier than I normally do, but I am busy this weekend, so I'm bringing you the news on Friday instead. And the overarching theme this week seems to be technological advancement, so stuff that's quite interesting and gives us a good little vision, good insight into what the future is going to be like in virtual reality, and it's got me pretty excited, so I think enough chinwagging, let's get started. So let's start this off to talk about a new game that's coming to the PC platform on April 2nd with the Oculus Quest soon to follow suit. We don't have an exact date for the Oculus Quest, but we know the game is called Star Cooler, and it's said to be a fast paced puzzler, which is interesting because commonly puzzlers tend to make you take your time, try and solve the puzzle, Think about it, try and figure it out, but this one has got a different take. You're going to have to complete these puzzles as fast as you possibly can. And adding that intensity and that challenge, I like the sound of that. There are over 30 levels which are going to be randomised, so you won't dive into the game playing the same levels every time you boot the title up. The story of the title is you are a star caller, hence the name. And there's chaos and disorder in the world. And it is up to you to set it right. You must complete these puzzles to restore peace to the universe. And when you do so and you complete these temples, the night sky will shine once again with stars. Isn't that nicely poetic? Something that's even more spectacular though is that this team have worked on this game un- paid. So they have worked not being paid to bring us a virtual reality experience. So I think out of principle, I'm going to purchase this title as soon as it's released because it's an interesting puzzler and that is an amazing thing to do for the virtual reality community. So thank you. Now this story I like because it's a very different take on the use of virtual reality. Not to use it for playing games and having virtual reality esports, but instead to improve the spectator sport of watching esports, which already has a huge established community. And since lockdown, it's not like we can go to a stadium and watch an event. And this tech could make those experiences more immersive. So this is about Hyperplane, which is designed for live streams. And they've also got a pre-recorded demo of Smash Brothers that you can actually watch online using WebXR. And you can watch a Smash Bros fight in virtual reality in 3D. And this tech also allows you to move around the actions. You can get up close and have different vantage points. I just think about where all of this can be applied and it just makes the idea of watching esports so good. Can you imagine watching League of Legends, that top down view, but in 3D you can see the plane or a racing game where you can sit in the passenger seat with your favorite racer. It has so much potential to elevate these experiences. I love this idea and hopefully eventually being able to stream with this tech at home so you guys could be writing the action with me as well. It sounds so good. The devs have said though that they have plans to support virtual reality starting with games such as Iron Lights and Swords of Garah. And they are going to be doing another stream on March the 29th. I'll leave a link to that down below so you can watch the WebXR stream in virtual reality and see Hyperplane in action once again for yourselves. Another update is coming for Real VR Fishing, the game where you can just take it easy, take in serene environments, relax with a buddy, and catch some fish in some stunning photorealistic environments from all over the world. So the spring edition update coming on April 8th is going to reduce new leaderboards. So you're actually going to have a chance to be top of the leaderboards if you like playing this title. They're also adding more clothing for your custom avatars and full screen support for the YouTube window, which you can get in game. Because in game, you can open up that internet browser and you can visit YouTube. They're now going to support full screen mode for that as well, which is a great feature. So when you're with a friend, you're fishing, you can just put some music on or watch a video and just Literally relax, get away, escape from real life. This game is so good for that. That's a really nice update. <laughs> Pavlov Build 24, the version of the game that has been optimized for the Oculus Quest 2 and was submitted for App Lab has now finally progressed. We finally hear something about it after Pavlov, or sorry, Dave Vils, posted an image in the Discord chat of Oculus saying, congratulations, Pavlov Shack Beta has passed the content review and it's going into publishing review. This is where the game is going to be evaluated on its pricing, prepare it for distributions, get screenshots, and other assets needed for the game. Because of course, when you visit the store, it's got a description, it's got images of the game and videos of the game. They're gonna need all of that. So it shouldn't be too much longer until we can actually play the game. And we were told by Dayvilles to expect a release in February. And it's now 
end of March. So who knows how long this is going to take. Although they did say it's just going to be a few days. So hopefully it's not too long. It's going to be a glorious day when this game is finally here because it's one of the most polished realistic shooters on the Oculus Quest and has a ton of content even in its stripped back version, the Pavlov Shack. Davils also said that the AbLab version of Pavlov is going to be in its beta, so it will continue to be a free title, just like it was on SideQuest. And since they're no longer under stringent policies to actually meet to get onto the store, it might be a very long time before they actually start imposing a price tag on players for their content. Which is super nice of you, thank you so much. This next story is about more games getting nice Quest 2 enhancement and there is another game to add to that list that's getting an update and it's a scary title, The Exorcist Legion. The latest version is now going to support 90 Hertz on the Oculus Quest 2 so you're gonna have a much smoother experience so you can now shout and scream with a higher refresh rate. And as well as that, they're going to have improved in-game physics, updated textures, there's been updates with the lighting, the overall resolution's been updated as well, including more animations, they've also been adjusted and added, so there should be a more noticeable difference if you dare to play this game or if your eyes are open long enough to even notice because you're just so scared you keep your eyes shut. Now we need to talk about this game, a new virtual reality game that is a battle royale but one that is like Grand Theft Auto vibes with its play style and the mechanics. It's like watching the first person mode of Grand Theft Auto 5 watching the gameplay of this title. So this game is called Gang 5 Civil Battle Royale from Raptor Lab. And this is going to be a PC VR title, not a quest game. And it looks like it's going to give Population 1 a run for its money. Because not only does this look insane, it's also going to support flat screen players, increasing the potential user base tenfold. So you can enjoy a game of up to 50 other players that are going to be placed on a map that stretches over 64 kilometers to your scale. And you'll come across vehicles that you can ride, you can go on foot, you can scavenge for resources and for weapons. And another unique take is that this isn't just you and enemies on a map fighting to be the last one standing. The world is going to be populated with NPCs. So as you're battling it out on the streets, real people are going to be driving their cars or walking down the street. There are also some interesting quirks such as you can hide in traffic. If you're driving like an ordinary citizen, you can try and hide from someone that's trying to look and try and kill you. And there's also law enforcement in this game. So if you're breaking the law a lot, you're going crazy, the police will come after you. So you have to avoid them as well as players trying to kill you. The game is just so intensely thought out and brings so many interesting new innovative ideas to the genre of a battle royale, adding features that I didn't even know I wanted, but now that I know them and I've seen this gameplay, I want to play this so, so bad. The potential in this title is huge for it to be the next big multiplayer in virtual reality and flat screen games, just gaming as a whole. And now something else that also has me ecstatic are people bringing classic franchises and great games to virtual reality. And this new video shows off a proof of concept that has turned Zelda, the breath of the wild, into a first person virtual reality game. The video is a POC or a proof of concept or what my friend calls it is a piece of crap because you usually throw your POC away and start building what you've just proved out properly. So in showing this video off, the devs have said that it may be a few months or maybe six months before there's any playable public Public release of this mod, which I think I can wait to play this game in virtual reality. It's going to come. I'm happy. I will wait as long as it's done right. And in this video, they show off the first person view and also a third person view where you're overlooking Zelda running around because they've modded Zelda. They've taken out Link. So it's Zelda. I'm not getting that wrong. <laughs> So you see Zelda running around with that godlike view and I like godlike views in virtual reality. I find it interesting that I can overlook and see a world existing. So I'm super pumped for that and it's really great to say that in Q4 of 2021, we can expect, hopefully Nintendo doesn't come after anyone, we can expect Zelda Breath of the Wild virtual reality at the end of this year. That's so cool. And now finally something to look forward to as Team Beef are now working on another project. They brought us Half-Life 1, Half-Life 2 to virtual reality, Doom to VR and Doom 3 to VR and Wolfenstein. They're just revamping classics all the time in 6DOF. And the team's next installment is Wraith. Aeon of Ruin, a Quake-inspired FPS. Of course, the game doesn't have the same reputation as the other ports. The other games are absolute classics. And this game is a modern-day title that's still in its early release on Steam. The game is from 3D Realms, the creators of Duke Nukem, Prey, and Max Payne, games that we love. The game does seem like a modern Doom, though, in terms of the gameplay, where it's very fast-paced and very 
action-packed, but with an old-school skin on it. And that's because this game was actually built using an old Quake engine, and which is why it's also possible for Dr. Beef, or Team Beef, sorry, to port this game to virtual reality. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled on this one because it looks so good, and I love the other ports that this team have done. I'm a retro fan, and I love virtual reality, so this fusion is right up my street. So that's it from me today, guys. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, getting caught up on the weekly news in the virtual reality space. I'm sorry that this was on Friday and not on Saturday for the regulars. Hope you didn't miss out on this video. Please subscribe if you're new here. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.